Lucky. Welcome back to Anime Casuals. I'm Lucky. Here I go! This hand of mine is burning red! And I'm Michael. Realize the only ones who should kill are those who are prepared to be killed. Johnny. Your darkness swallowed up my son? Who decided that? Opting! Burning! Now all of you. Die. Die. Oh, right. One. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Anime Casuals. I am Lucky. And I am a Michael. I'm a Johnny. And we make up Anime Casuals. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether you're watching this on YouTube or just listening to us on regular old podcasts. Uh, today on the casual discussion, we're talking about anime that made us cry. Uh, or, in some of our cases, anime that almost made us cry. Um, but, okay, Michael, I think it was you that came up with this one. Am I right? I can't remember. Maybe you Cry anime! Yeah, that was me! Yeah, that was me. I'll, I'll start it. I'll start it. I'll start it. So, I actually have a weirdly long list, but my list entitles anything that I cried at. So, like, a good chunk of them are movies. It's just easier to make someone cry during a movie, but some of them have moments where I cried, but the whole anime is not cry like is not sad. So I'm gonna go through. You know, should should we leave the base ass answers to the end or to the beginning? <laughs> uh, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, like yeah, just uh, however you want to with that. I can like okay. I'm gonna lightning round the base has answers, and then I'll start with uh, my number one, probably the earliest. I don't know if I cried like this is the first anime I cried at, but I'm gonna start with Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, Yu Yu Hakusho has like the saddest beginning of a lot of anime. Not the most messed up, but it just starts so sad. And um, back when we were doing our retro anime and like going to like find something from our childhood to rewatch. Uh, Part of that was Yu Yu Hakusho for me. Um, it was it's so long though. Like like I, I was never gonna get to the end of that. But I rewatched like the first ten episodes and I cried again because the the way like he dies for that kid one of really them like trying to push it down your throat that he's a punk and only cares about himself and then like l uh, the funeral scene where he sees all the people go to his funeral. And, like, how, like, all these people cared about him, even if he was a punk and a bully. And, like, they all remembered, like, fond memories. And then that part where, like, Kuwabara, like, starts crying. And he's like, come back! Come back, Yusuke! Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're a meshy! I'm, 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 we're gonna fight one more last time! You're such a coward! Like, every time, I'm like, oh, you're such a... You, you, uh, now the classic word for that is a himbo. He's definitely a himbo type. He's just he's big, he's big, meaty, not like like swole, but he's definitely strong. And like just the fact he cares so much about about Yusuke that he's literally crying at his funeral just to have one more fight, that like tore at my heartstrings every time. And to watch like Yusuke's like whole transformation in the first like ten episodes for him going like I'm a bully to like I'm literally reformed because I died. Like I literally died um was just it it's so impactful and i think it like all like knits itself together with the i think his body almost burning up in the fire that that was uh it was really good so i if you want a good cry i would say watch the first 10 episodes of uh yu haka show also the music hits that's one i could rewatch. i haven't seen that in a while not it's, since tsunami it's still good <laughs> um so my next choice sorry my first choice uh, it's gonna be one. I know I've mentioned it before. It's gonna be uh, the end of uh, Dragon Ball CGT. Um, I don't know. There was always something about that ending that got to me. Uh, the way Goku kind of accepts, you know, I'm kind of done fighting. I mean, it was very like not for Goku's, you know, attitude at all as we know him today. Um, but I don't know. I thought it was just kind of cool where he was like, okay, things almost went really bad right there. I think I'm gonna go chill somewhere else for a while. And he, you know, that's kind of the end of it. He says goodbye to everybody, and then he leaves. You know, he goes into the sky with Shenron. Uh, and I always thought that was just a really nice kind of ending to it. You know, it was just kind of, Goku's finally going to take a rest. You know, 
He's got it. I think he had his power pole for some reason, or maybe just the Nimbus mm-hmm. was nearby. I don't remember, but I I don't know. I just that was one. It would. I think I got maybe a tear. It's like one of the only anime that I actually cried at. It might have been like a single tear. It was like goodbye, Goku. Ding. For a so, man who cried at the end of Godzilla, it makes a lot of sense. They did it so bad. <laughs> they shot her in the neck. Ah! <laughs> it's tragic. <laughs> Poor single mother, come on! Uh, it's jo- ridiculous. Jo- Johnny also cried when uh, when the when the guy was like clever girl, and he's like, no, the Velociraptor. Oh, I got scared, and then I was relieved. I'm like, oh, there's two of them. Oh, thank God. <laughs> they always come from the sides. Oh man. So yeah. Uh, you gotta, you gotta love Johnny, man. Um, I'm trying to think of where I need to start with this. Um, I think, I think I'm gonna start with like a real obvious one here. Uh, this one, uh, I'm not gonna spoil exactly who it is, but uh, this is gonna be for Naruto. Uh, there's a pretty big, impactful death. Actually, one of the, I think it's the second one that happens in Naruto Shippuden. Um, but this particular death was like hit really hard just because of how. Um, impactful the person was to the series but also the fact like when they start bringing back people like later on in the series for you know once again a spoiler reason uh from like the dead and stuff if, if he's the only one that's like they're like oh that's actually we can't bring him back and everybody was like i kind of want to see him again but you know uh you know <laughs> they couldn't bring him back for those reasons but uh it was uh it was such a profound like effect that happened on him uh that, that happened you know with naruto and everything I really kind of showed like the human side of it because usually Naruto is like the typical shonen protagonist. Like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna become the strongest. I'm gonna become Okage. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And it's not like Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z where like the person can come back. Like you just get the the Dragon Balls. You wish them back, or you wish for this girl to be like an actual girl so that you can fuck her. Um, it's not like that. You know what I mean? So it's not like the the exact same uh, I don't know, thing like that. Chakra. But. Uh... <laughs> No, so uh have yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean well you know what any i guess anything would be possible for for naruto and uh and sasuke in the future but well, well that's a, that's for another time but anyway yeah naruto a particular death that i'm not going to okay. go over but uh you probably you guys probably all know who it is so anyway yeah i mean there are puppet masters in uh naruto so i mean i'm not putting that past that anybody is. Um, okay, let's go to probably the most recent anime. So we're sorry, we went from the beginning, went to the end. Uh, the most recent anime to like really like make me cry a bunch was uh, Komi Can't Communicate, and th- they were all happy tears. Like, that was like, it was like, oh, it's so sweet. And like watching her take little baby steps just to get like over or deal with her social anxiety step by step. Um, especially that first episode, like almost knocked it out of the park for like being a perfect, like bookend for, you know, the first season to be like, watch where she started and then see how she comes along. And every little step she takes is, is actually a huge step for her. And it's just too cute. And I let out happy tears while watching it. Nice. I'm waiting for the, the dub to be on Netflix for some reason. That'll make Johnny cry. <clears throat> um, the next one, I actually should have looked up the uh, title to make sure, but I think it's uh, The Day I Became a God. Uh, that entire uh, anime is kind of... It gets really sad towards the end. Um, uh, especially, I mean, you see these people kind of like bond and work together, you know, be kind of become a big friend group. And then... Uh, you find out that that time is very much uh, limited. And um, I'm trying to say how to, what I'm trying to say without like spoiling the entire anime, but the, something ha- tragic happens to the main character um, and she can't function entirely. So there's this huge transformation in the main character from one person to another. And then we find our, our, our second main character, the male main character kind of faced with a choice of you know what do you do do you just leave or do you know you accept this person for what they are and what has happened to them i mean and you know um just live in the moments that you had before you know and remember that kind of stuff and that was just kind of a uh just that realization of him like walking her out in the snow like in a wheelchair you know and she's like mostly lucid toward 
you know, for that moment. I mean, uh, it was a moment I was like, damn, that sucks. That's really tough. You know, I commend that guy for being able to do that. That fictional anime character. No. <laughs> Uh, but I, it's just still, it's one of those like, man, could I do that? I got to put myself in their shoes and kind of like, I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. So that was one moment that I was like, wow, that's a pretty heavy twist to this anime. Lucky. Did you watch that anime? Am I thinking of the wrong anime? No, no I didn't. No, no. I was just wondering. I've never seen it. Okay. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. I, I just like it when, when, during our list, we, we say an anime that's so niche, only we have seen it. So, I, oh, you know, yeah. it makes me happy. Johnny just whips out an anime going, I've literally never heard of that one before. I think there's, like, <laughs> no fan service? I don't know. Bigger shot. Impossible. What have you done with Johnny? Impossible! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go blow up King Kai's planet right now. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, who are you? It's a scroll, I swear. Oh, man. What well, if that's how we found out Johnny was a scroll? <laughs> it's just him watching non... <laughs> it's him watching non-fan service anime. That would be hilarious. I'm right next to him. You're, you're, over, you're over where you're at. Let's just change. <laughs> <laughs> Execute him. <laughs> just, oh, my God. Oh, man. Uh, Execute Oda 69. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I was gonna add on to it, but I'm not. I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop right there before we get into more trouble. Um, I'm trying to think of where. Um, okay, this one was a surprising cry. Like you know those cries that you don't you, like. You, you're like, oh no, this is. I'll be fine. And you keep, yeah, you keep on like s- telling yourself, oh, I know what's gonna happen. I'll be fine. I know what's gonna happen. I'll be fine. I know what's gonna happen. I'll be fine. And then it happens, and you're like, <laughs> like the ugly cry happened. And uh, this is Anahana. Um, I don't remember what the mm-hmm. English thing is, like the flower that bloomed that day or something like that. But uh, I remember I was watching day? this. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I just remember I watched it and I was like, I, I was like, because it's pretty obvious where things are going, right? Um, you know, it, this all happened in the first episode, by the way. But uh, this friend who has passed away ends up coming back as a ghost and haunting, or not haunting, sorry, but like coming back and just, you know, kind of bothering like the main character for a while and you kind of see as the show goes on that she's kind of there to remind them like hey listen you guys haven't accepted that i'm gone you know that kind of thing and throughout that whole thing it's just you know you know something's gonna happen and you're like all right no i'll be ready for it but then this stupid uh i think the song's called secret bass this stupid song comes in and it's just like so like so mellow and everything it just comes in and that's why why I surprised cried because I was like, okay, as long as some sad song doesn't come in out of nowhere, but then all of a sudden it's like, I'm like, no. <laughs> and so yeah, I was uh, I was uh, I was a mess, dude. Because you know when you're trying to hold when you're trying to like hold back, uh, it's almost like if a firefighter like did the wa- the fire hydrant thing, but then somebody tried to like put their hands against the fire hose, like it's not gonna happen, right? In fact, you're gonna get blown back and you're gonna probably lose your hands. Uh, and that was how I felt when I watched Anahana. So yeah, that was uh, that was a rough one. <laughs> yeah, I was you know weirdly I always imagined Johnny you know watching anime and then he's like the guy from Thirty of the Chance of Meatballs and he's like get back in there and his tear <laughs> just sucks back up into his eye and nobody ever sees him crying. Uh, sometimes like if I if a tear forms I'll be like huh interesting let's see where this goes and it it never comes to anything further. But yeah, that's where my brain lands. I'm like huh water. <laughs> It's obstructing my view. Then Let's your eye just goes happens. and yeah. sucks it right back in your head. And it goes like, sorry, sorry, we're just kidding. And it goes back in my face. It's windshield wiper it. <laughs> <laughs> you have the reverse where you're like, get out of there. And it was like, no, I'm not, I'm not coming out. <laughs> okay. Um, I, Lucky, I like your surprise cry because uh, another anime that I recommend to you guys, but it's like, it's not a strong recommendation. It's just a fun anime, um, is A Hero No Sora, uh, the basketball anime. Um, and at some point in the anime, um, there's a character who passes away and it's like really surprising and it comes out of nowhere and it just hits you right in the stomach. And what's amazing about that is that you witness the character's reactions to this and like the way our like main boys in the anime, like deal with it and recover and actually work together with each other and kind of look out for each other um, is really surprising because like the, the anime is basically about thugs who play basketball and like d- during like 
like the first like 30 episodes maybe like 20 episodes i don't really remember where where it happens you like they're just kind of thugs playing basketball you realize they're a little bit deeper of characters and then this happens and you're like whoa it like rocks all of them um <clears throat> and it it shows that a hero nosora versus like kuroku's basketball a hero nosora is not about the basketball it's more about the character development while kuroko's basketball is all about basketball and then you got like high is like a mix so if you're looking for like sports but with that with like character storytelling i would highly recommend watching that and it's got 50 episodes out and i think the whole dub's out already so it's it's really good it's on my back burner list admittedly of like one day i'll be really wanting to watch a sports anime and i'll probably jump to that i'm not gonna lie but i i'm just waiting for it i oh you just reminded me i think i saw high like season three in english or something on like oh. high dive i don't oh. know anyway i'm not gonna uh, so my next one, as far as crying, not happy moments, not like IQ, um, is from a, a pretty recent anime, actually. Um, earlier this week, there was an episode of uh, Made in the Abyss. Hey guys, real quick, if you are not caught up on at least to Season 2, Episode 10 of Made in the Abyss, go ahead and skip over to 18 minutes and 13 seconds if you guys do not want to be spoiled. <clears throat> and uh, I... You know, I, I handled the first one pretty well, where, they, you know, they had to take out Mitty, and, you know, uh, it was necessary, and I knew it, and it was sad. But, uh, man, when she's like, all right, Mitty, let's, let's get out of here, and she's like, hey. And Bella's like, hey, you see that, that barrier over there? You go over there, Mitty's going to disappear. I was like, oh, God. Really? You got her back and immediately throw her away. I... I, I knew, I was like, what's she going to do? Just stay there in the bubble forever with Beloff? Maybe. I don't know. But I guess not, because, you know, he's going to go walk out there and start falling apart, too. But I, man, I, that was another one of those, like, the tear, it got to, like, right there, right on the edge. And I was like, oh, man, I can't deal with this right now. Whoop, back. <laughs> but I, I got real close. I was like, oh, oh, man, poor Nanachi. Well, that sucks. Johnny, I am glad you brought it up because I would have brought it up as well. Because main the biz, that both all the times with Mitty rock me. Like the first yeah. time in the first season rocked me. This time again rocked me. Like I was like, mm -hmm. show stop it. <laughs> yeah, they know. They, they just know. Just start bringing her back for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> just falls out of just falls out of the ceiling, and then you're like, no, and she just disappears as she hits the floor. You're like, what? <laughs> We're approaching the next level. It's the Mitty level. <laughs> what, what does that mean? It's just MIDI. It's all, it's MIDI. all MIDI's. <laughs> We're inside it's MIDI right MIDI now. now. <laughs> it's all. It's ever dying MIDI's. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, oh, MIDI you is always gonna make me sad. So Reg's just ever blasting all the MIDI's away. <laughs> <laughs> just passing out and just waking up again. Oh, there's more. <laughs> 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 they slowly oh just man. Dude, people that have not watched Made in Abyss have no idea what we're talking about, but that's okay. Anyway, um, you know, I'm trying – yeah, recommendation, hard recommendation. Um, okay, so this one I'm kind of mad at that it made me cry because it was like – it was like a really – it was like a cheap cry. Like, And the weird part is I knew it was going to happen because Watch Mojo told me about it. But the problem was – like it told me it was, it was going to happen. By the way, this is a Clonaut after story. Um, it told me it was going to happen, but I didn't – I never seen the characters before, so I was like, "Oh yeah, no." I mean, I'll just watch it and see it for that. But then once I got attached to the characters, and the moment happened in Clonad After Story, so there's Clonad, which is like a regular shoujo anime. Uh, they're you know kind of like a harem almost. But then Clonad After Story is basically like, if uh, if this character chose this girl, this is what the the after story would be with her, um, and. Dude, it is rough. It is one of the roughest things that I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, now, granted, I think they, they did something stupid at the end where they kind of said, I mean, maybe there's a chance that this sad thing didn't happen. Because for people that don't know, it's like an Atome game. So uh, we talked about this a long time ago, but, uh, you know, one of those type things. And so apparently if you grab and this is the thing that uh, they go to this other world every now and then where it's like, this robot talking it's like oh yeah like i'm collecting these orbs for some reason and if you played the game what happened was if you collected these orbs you could get the good ending where everybody survives and everybody's cool and yeah 
and uh but uh they decided to like kind of hint at that but kind of not but also show you like the death of people the, these people so i was uh i don't know i just felt like it was a really cheap cry i still cried uh first off the 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 way they show the character who's mourning is ridiculous like it is one of the saddest things i've ever seen um and also it's just such a contrast from the the very first Clon- like clonade the regular show is kind of funny it has some cool stuff to it and then all of a sudden clonade after story comes in it's like hey you know uh, those childhood dreams you know all that eh, pff, fuck those things yeah, <laughs> you know just, yeah just crush them down we'll just uh, grind them in ashes and you'll be that you'll be on your way so uh yeah clonade after story uh, it got me, but I'm still angry about it. I, think, I still think it's a cheap cry. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably have two more pretty serious ones. Okay. So I'm going to hit those. Uh, number one of which, I think these are probably some hard cries out there. Like, yeah, I think these are pretty hard cries. So I'm gonna, the, the first one of the hard cry series, which I also intro Johnny to, and I, I I would hope it was on his list, but I don't know if he, he, he remembered it. But it was Iron Blooded Orphans. Uh, that show is messed up. They get you to like people, and then they do stuff to those people, and you're like, "What are you doing to me?" Because um, there's a certain there's a certain something happens to a certain character that is literally tragic, and. The entire time, like watching the watching the episode, watching the show, you, you kind of get that made in the best feeling. You're like, oh, bad bad things are happening to kids. That's real messed up. And then something really bad happens to a kid, and you're like, no, no, how dare you? And you just have a good tears to yourself. And you sit you sit with yourself, and you go, am I worthy? And then you say, no, I'm not. And then you keep watching the show, and then you're like, oh, okay, good. At least those at least those people got what they deserved. So my last one, I, I'm just going to say real quick, it always, uh, when I think of sad parts, the anime is uh, just usually what comes to mind. Uh, it's from Full Metal Alchemist. It's uh, the whole scene with Major Hughes being in the uh, the phone oh. booth and, you know, getting taken out and, you know, he's oh. trying to make a phone call. He's trying to be the best he can be, you know, the, the good guy. And he just is taken out because he's too good. He, he was... You know, he's the best of them all, and that's why he had to go. And that's so tragic. He's such a he was such a good guy, good character. Mm-hmm. He didn't deserve to die, and unfortunately, that's why he had to. It's just major Hughes. You know, it's so sad that like other parts of the anime, I think, did detract you from that moment because that's probably the saddest moment in the entire entire series. And there's other parts that happened before that that are just messed up. But not a sad. I was gonna say that's more shocking. Yeah. Than sad. But like that's like it sticks out to your in your head. I would say like it's yeah. like shocking moment, and then the actual sad moment's like wow, this is really messed up. Especially how he dies. Mm-hmm. Mm, wow, that was that's a good one. I, I and then especially when uh, when Edward sees him on the train uh, mm-hmm. as he's going, he's just like, the fuck was? I think I'm getting haunted, man. What the fuck is this? You know, <laughs> just that was like a man. huge bummer. Oh man. Um, so I guess so that, you said that was your last one, Johnny. I'll just go through uh, yeah. last of mine, and then uh, Michael, you can go through the last of yours. Um, so I mean, we're we're gonna all mention this at some. Uh, we're, we're we got to mention this at some point. It's gonna happen. So I feel like Michael will mention it. So I'm gonna leave it off. Um, and then we're gonna yeah. go to um, a couple ones that are kind of interesting. Um, so Soccer Quest is not one I completely like. I completely cried at, but it was one of those ones that really made you uh, feel like this. This anime is too real. Like it's too much about real life. Like when you talk about slice of life, this is the definition. Like Soccer Quest is the definition. Yeah. <laughs> all about a young girl going out to the countryside, uh, you know, trying to find herself, that kind of thing, and then kind of finds herself and says, "Oh, I gotta. I guess I gotta go out into the world and kind of figure this stuff out." And, uh, yeah, that was kind of like, it was one of those things, like a very happy kind of sadness. And then, um, and then I, I just had to mention this one cause it's one of those ones that you don't, it was one of the most unexpected things. Um, I didn't, I don't think I completely cried, but it was one of those things where I was like, I mean, I'm not crying, but I feel like I'm a monster because I'm not crying. Uh, it's senior pink from one piece. Uh, I don't think that that's one of the craziest backstories I've ever seen for one of the weirdest okay. characters. I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like this guy dresses up like a baby and you're like, Oh dude. I mean, <laughs> you know, Oda can't make this. He, they can't, he can't make this character. Like he can't actually explain why this character wears a baby. So he, they, he, then he explains it. He explains it so well that it's like, Oh, 
you know what? He, he's so hard boiled. I don't know what to think. You know, it's just too much, man. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say, like, when I saw his backstory, I, I, I had to take like a 20 minute like walk for a second because I was like, I kind of thought this was because this is when I was binge watching it. So uh, I had to binge watch all the way. Uh, I think it was to uh, I got to like after Dress the Rosa arc. But yeah, I had to like stop for a second and be like, <sighs> all right. Um, but yeah, I think those are. Oh, and then Fruits Basket um, is another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, just one of those ones that like a really happy cry. But at the same time, it was just. I mean, you have to think there's like 25 episodes each season. There's three seasons. Like it, it was it had a lot in it. So um, all the build up was. Uh, I think that's how, much, how many episodes were in it. But either way, it was just a long build up and just all worth it. All worth it at the end. So yeah, those are my last three. Well, let's start with the one that you might have you were about to say. Was it Assassination Classroom? No, but that's a good one though. I do like that one. Okay. <laughs> That one is not sad until the very end, and I'm just going to leave it at that because I would love you for anybody to go watch it. Uh, I've mentioned it in the past, and I probably have spoiled it in a previous episode. But, you know, I, I always feel like if you're spoiling something, it's harder to cry at because you're expecting it. Um, very rarely, like some of the things I've already said on the list, I, I kind of already knew or suspected it was going to happen. It happened, and I still cried. So, like, I think that's even better. Like, you watch something and you know what's coming up and you still cry at it. That means it's, like, actually really good. Um, so, I guess we'll see. Maybe Lucky's going to sneak one at the end. So, I'm just going to run through mine real quick. A recovery of an MMO junkie uh, killed me for happiness. It's so cute. And, again, it's kind of like Comey where, you, like, you watch someone slowly build back up their self-confidence after literally, like, getting basically burnout. Like, a hard work burnout. And then finally goes, I think I'm ready to go be part of the world again. That Not just the online world. Um, Mishoku Tensei has some really intense moments. I think that one's a stretch for me. I don't think I ever got close to crying during it. But it is really sad at some moments. Uh, especially when they touch on the character's backstory. Uh, that's like the really sad moments. Um, Angel Beats. I don't know. I showed it to Johnny. And I think re-watching with Johnny. I was like, okay. And then... When I watched it the first time, there was only one moment that hit me, and I think it was the very end of it. Uh, this Maybe this is the second shot at Lucky. You're a lie in April. Um, there we go. There, I knew I'd get it. Uh, You're a lie in April is literally sad. Go watch it. Go cry. Have fun with it. I don't want to like spoil anymore. It's just, go watch it. It's like classic cry movie. And then we have a, a Violet Evergarden is probably the one that was like a very surprising cry. There's a certain episode... Uh, I think it's like episode nine or 10 that just comes out of left field and socks you across the jaw. Um, I think I watched it with Johnny and I was tearing up next to him because it's just, it's not just good storytelling, but it's literally beautiful. Like it looks really pretty and that's really the like, and the music's beautiful too. And then we have a menagerie of movies. We have silent voice, your name and uh, spirited away and princess Mononoke. Um, I haven't cried as Spirited Away in a long time, but Silent Voice, Your Name, and Princess Mononoke always get me at some point. Um, whether it's like Princess Mononoke when they're like holding the head up at the end, um, or like that moment where he's like pushing open the gate, that like both parts are really sad. Your Name, there's a specific moment in the movie that is really funny and sad at the same time. Um, and Silent Voice... Uh, I think I watched with both of you guys, and it has so many moments that are incredibly depressing because it has to do with bullying. So I would highly recommend in everything we have said because, you know, <clears throat> every once in a while I feel like you need someone needs a good, for Johnny, sad feeling, or for the rest of us, cry. Um, just because it kind of helps, like, wake you up or, like, make you appreciate what you have a little bit more. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, I, just a quick shout out. Um, I, I don't think any of us cried at this, but I know we all watched it because I found it for free on YouTube. I want to eat your pancreas. Um, I, I yeah. thought this was going to be a monster movie. It was not. Um, and it was not as advertised, but I had to like, I had to scream at Johnny at some point because I was trying not to cry and he called something that uh i was like you jinxed it man you jinxed it and i was just sitting there trying to like not to cry so i was like i need a scapegoat i need to just yell at something and uh yeah he took it well but uh and then also with that violet evergarden i was just thinking about it i don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie but the movie actually goes off of that particular episode 
and goes like into the future kind of. And it was, I was like, wow. dude, they milked this episode so much. But the problem was I had to watch it all like flashbacks of it again. And it almost like brought it back. I was like, oh, oh this is why. <laughs> you get back in there. <laughs> get back in there. So, um, yeah, Violet, that, oh man, that was a good, that was a good one. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, remember you can check out all things casual at the link tree in the info box or description box if you guys are watching this on YouTube. Also, if you like to email us, you can email, email us, excuse me, at anime casuals with an S, real R E A L, at gmail.com. I'm trying to think, did I, did I figure out what I was going to watch this week? Nope, I didn't figure out what I'm going to watch this week uh, for the weekly review, but oh well. I will let you guys know that on Tuesday. But as always, guys, don't forget to keep it casual.